Hey, everybody. Welcome to another interview here in the Cowboy Boot industry. We got a big brand, a special guest today. We have Clayton Smith, who is the Senior Director of Sales at Twisted X Global Brands. Clayton, thank you so much for joining me today for this interview. I really appreciate your time. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I'm, I've been a fan of the channel for a long time, and I'm just happy to sit down and chat with you. Thank you. Yes, it's always good catching up. I mean, over the past two years, we got to catch up at WESA a couple of times. So it's nice to get to know you a little bit more. And um, thank you for joining us today, because uh, what we've spoken about in the past, I feel like it's very valuable for everybody else to know, too, just what Twisted X is all about. And kind of like what you enjoy about it, too. I mean, yeah. you've worked at other Western brands, right? I mean, that's correct. Uh, some of the big ones, too. So I, I kind of want to kick off our conversation today with, you know, what is different about Twisted X from the other brands, the big brands that you've worked yeah. at? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've been lucky. I got started in this industry at, like you mentioned, some of the the bigger brands, bigger family of brands uh, that are all, you know, very heritage based brands. They have a lot of history, very traditional um, backgrounds and boots. Um, and what's so interesting about coming and joining Twisted X a few years ago is just how, you know, future and forward thinking the company is. It's ingrained, I feel like, throughout the entire organization. We're always trying to push the envelope and push the needle and figure out, you know, uh, what can be done. It's never, you know, well, we can't do that because of this. It's always like, what if and why not, you know, instead, which is uh, really refreshing. I think personally, for me, I find it um, invigorating. I think there's, a spot in the industry um, and in, you know, on the shelves for both sides of the spectrum in the boot market, in the boot industry. There's going to be your very traditional heritage-based brands that are doing things the way they've always been done, and they're going to do them well and to the best of their ability. And I love that. I own, you know, several pairs of boots that are like that. I also love the uh, kind of tinkering and figuring out new ideas and how to make things, you know, more comfortable or in, impact the cowboy boot world with uh, new in, uh, new technology, um, new ways of uh, constructing a cowboy boot, uh, which I mean, you've seen through testing out some of our, our tech X styles um, and trying to figure out how to bring that kind of sneaker casual comfort that Twisted X is really known for into our Western boots. Um, so just the kind of the the tinkering spirit, I think, is what makes it really fun and unique here at Twisted X. Yeah, and you guys seem to have done that since inception. I mean, you guys originally released the uh, the driving mock, right? That was one yes. of your first pieces of footwear before cowboy boots at all. So I don't know if you were there during that process, but yeah. what was that process like in growing and expanding those products into the Western boot space from what you learned on the driving mock side? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually funny. So Twisted X actually had been around five years making traditional cowboy boots before oh, the driving mock came okay. out. Founded in 2005 and the driving mock came out in 2010. Oh, um, my at, bad. My at, bad. No, it's totally fine. A lot of people don't know, which is what I kind of find interesting. So yeah. Twisted, X, Twisted X's roots and its heritage actually is in the cowboy boot world. Okay. Um, the founder of Twisted X, you know, when it first started, he was making what you probably first thought of when you think about cowboy boots and, and Twisted X is the buckaroos, the tall tops, the, uh, you know, the bright, colorful shafts. Um, what he was doing was catering to the, the farmers and ranchers and, and cowboys right here around where we're based in Decatur, Texas. But then um, our CEO now, Prasad, stepped in and came into the company, and he brought with him the, the idea for the driving mock. Because what, would it, what had happened when he came in is he, was, he saw that boot sales during the summer warm months dropped off. 
And to be a company, a small company with a small number of styles, to not have a product that can carry you through was hurting the company. And so he said, you know what we're going to do is we're going to create a casual style and bring it to the cowboy boot and the cowboy, you know, Western wear market. He actually launched it at WISA in uh, 2010. And it, it's funny, I've heard him tell this story before, you know, our, our sales reps at the time were like, this isn't going to work. Nobody wants something like this. And they said, by the end of that, that market, they were coming to and say, hey, I think we got something here because the response from the customers was positive. And that's really what put Twisted X on the map was the original driving mod. Um, and so since then, you know, it's taken that kind of tinkering spirit that I mentioned earlier and the success that we've had in that casual kind of Western shoe market, if you will, um, and kind of bringing that back to what our heritage is, which is in the cowboy boot world. Um, and knowing that, you know, we've, we've discovered new technology, new comfort packages, um, new ways of uh, new, new materials. And we have brought that into our Western boots um, as a way of, like I said, just kind of trying to tinker and, and think about, you know, how can we as Twisted X and, and staying true to who we are as a brand make the best cowboy boot that we can make? Yeah, I love that. Thank you for uh, giving us that whole story there. Yeah. Uh, that's a great way for, for us to really know what Twisted X is all about and, you know, the foundations of where you guys are going from here. Was yeah. there anything in particular that you guys learned from the success of that driving mock? I mean, was it Prasad's uh, view of the data, the marketing, uh, or um, <clears throat> the industry numbers that you guys had available to you uh, to then make the decision to be like, you know, maybe this driving mock is something that we should test. It ultimately succeeded. Have you done stuff like that since? Uh, and what has been the strategy that maybe you learned from the drop driving mocks that have uh, pushed some of those new products forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think what we learned definitely from the data and our sales data that, that the industry was craving a casual shoe that was comfortable. Um, again, the, the idea of a driving mock comes from the, the way that the heel is rounded on the bottom, literally for driving. If you think about your foot kind of pivoting on the gas pedal and brake pedal, because so many of our rural customers are on the highways hauling cattle, uh, traveling from rodeo to rodeo. Um, and so we just learned from our customer, we listened to our customer, and we were able to, able to, you know, ascertain that people really want comfort almost above all else, comfort, durability at an affordable price. And so that allowed us to focus in and hone in on comfort being, you know, one of our top pillars, our top, um, you know, objectives to hit with every uh, product that we make. Um, our tagline at Twisted X literally is rooted in comfort because it means so much to us. So taking the feedback that we got from the original driving mock and the, and the chuckas that we created and became popular and well known for and bringing those into the cowboy boot market is kind of what took us down that path of trying to, you know, make a super comfortable, almost shoe like Western boot. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for that. Uh, we have some folks in the live chat right now. Amusing Rants and Guitars says that he was one of the winners of the Twisted X Boot giveaway. Awesome. And uh, I remember that. He says he can vouch for how comfortable they are and will be buying more because of how comfortable they are. Um, I want to remind everybody in the live chat right now who or who are watching or listening live that you can put your questions for Clayton in the live chat and I will relay that, them on to him. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to get insights into the big brand cowboy boots scene um, from the brand itself. So don't, don't take this opportunity to lightly put your questions in the live chat. We're talking about how comfortable uh, cowboy boots are and 
the cell stretch is really interesting to me, right? Uh, cell stretch implementation in the boots, at least, took off last year, it seemed like. And those were in mocks before, right? Correct. Yeah. Cell stretch itself came out in 2018 uh, and was originally introduced into our casual shoes, our driving mocks. Um, and then, like you mentioned, from there, uh, we brought it into uh, our work boots um, and even some of our outdoor styles, which are, you know, different lace-up boots, different pull-on boots. And Western was kind of the, the you know, the last one to come around. Um, you know, we had been building uh, cowboy boots, you know, still a modern construction, but hadn't gone quite that far as introducing like a true comfort system into our Western boots. And that's kind of uh, where the idea of TechX was was kind of spurred from. And it took a while, we say about four years to kind of figure out exactly how to develop and get that cell stretch comfort technology into our Western boots. Yeah, because there's not very much room, especially in that third Tech X boot that uh, you guys released with the leather outsole. There's really not that much room for uh, as much comfort system in there. Um, exactly. How did how did that cell stretch sort of come about in the first place? Like, what was the um, the foundational thought behind it, and why all the little bubbles that are in there? Yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of in the name itself. It's called cell stretch. So the the way it came about, you know, Prasad is very in tune and involved with our product uh, kind of development cycle. He has regular conversations with our uh, developers and 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 uh, designers, um, and he also works very closely with our our factories. And so throughout that conversation, just looking again with the objective of wanting to create, you know, a more comfortable shoe originally, that's where cell stretch was kind of born through those conversations. Um, and so, like I was mentioning earlier, the, the cell stretch part of it, they're individual cells, those blue dots that you see on the underside of the, of the shoe or of the boot that you saw on the, the first Tech X that you tried out. Um, are located in the uh, forefoot or in the ball of the foot and in the heel. And there's about a hundred individual unique cells, um, about 20 of them being larger and in the heel and about 80 of them being smaller in the uh, ball of your foot. And what makes it so unique is that, you know, there's a lot of nerve endings uh, and, and things about the foot that, you know, give you feedback to your body, to your brain, you know, what is comfortable and what isn't. And those cells react individually to each, each unique foot, each unique person. So no matter, you know, the way you walk, your gait, as you, we would call it in the, you know, the footwear industry, um, it doesn't matter because the unique individual cells, instead of one solid sheet of, you know, gel or something like that, um, they compress and rebound based off of where your weight is, where you put the most pressure. Um, and they compress with every step and they rebound with every step, returning energy to your foot, which is why ultimately people find it so comfortable. We like to call it or say that it's, you know, cloud-like comfort with every step. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely a different feeling altogether from every other brand, brand that I've tried for sure. But you have three different iterations of it. Um, and is that you going to the market and sort of testing which, uh, three might work out the best, or is it like an evolution of it? And, uh, where do you, which one is performing the best right now? And do you see yourself doubling down on any one particular style? Sure. Um, I would say it, it is sort of an evolution, but we had the idea for kind of how we were going to roll out the Tech X line of boots from the get-go. Once mm -hmm. the, the technology and how we were going to construct it was kind of solidified, we knew kind of how we were going to roll out with, you know, the first version, the second version, and the third version, because they serve three unique different purposes. So in the first version, 
we have, you know, a kind of almost like a light duty work boot. So no safety toes or anything like that, but it does have a, a midsole and you, like you mentioned, kind of that sneaker like feel. Um, and so that was the very first one that we introduced. Uh, and so far that's been a huge hit. We are already very popular um, with our work boot styles. And so having a soft toe kind of light duty option that has that cell stretch comfort technology built in um, took off, which was super exciting. Then we knew, again, we wanted to bring that comfort and that technology back to our roots, back to our heritage. And so we wanted a couple of traditional looking boots that had a lot more going on under the hood than your eye might lead you to expect. Um, so the second version, which you also uh, did an extended test on, was the rubber, thin rubber outsole um, with no midsole. So it's a tr traditional looking boot, but you get that, that comfort and that grip uh, and that pliability of that rubber outsole. So we wanted to create something that wasn't a light duty look. It looked like a cowboy boot. It is a cowboy boot and it has that self-stretch comfort technology built right in. And then the third version, uh, which we released last was the leather outsole version, which again, you did a test on, um, you and Brenna actually, because uh, yep. we have it in men's and women's. Um, and so that, that one is super unique. I mean, super proud of what we, you know, we're able to accomplish there by, by essentially, like we've talked about building in that cell stretch comfort technology into a leather outsole boot. Um, and, you know, around here, we say that, you know, the the way of constructing cowboy boots really hasn't changed that much over the last 25 years. And so this was a big development jump um, that we're super excited about. And the response has been, you know, fantastic. And we've got more to come across the board, all three different versions uh, moving into the future. Oh, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Cool. I heard some great things about that first version as well. When uh, even before I tried the third version, uh, visiting stores in uh, South Dakota, uh, I believe it was Trav's Outfitters. They mm -hmm. said that that first version, that first Tech X boot with the cell stretch window, mm -hmm. that was one of their best selling Twisted X boots uh, that they had with that new Tech X uh, cell stretch system. In there. awesome, yeah, that's what we love to hear. Ken. So is the Tech X, is it necessary for there to be cell stretch in the boot for it to be considered a Tech X boot? Is it like a rectangular square thing it, or do they have to go together in order for it to be a Tech X? They have to go together. All so right. uh, we have other boots that are super comfortable and have been great for years and we're still continuing to develop other boots. We have our Rancher collection, we have Top Hand, um, Rough Stock, some other styles we have our Huey collaboration, and those are those are great boots on their in their own right and in their own merit. Um, but in order to be a Tech X boot, it will have self stretch inside of it. Cool, good to know. Good to know. Yeah. I want to remind everybody who's watching live or listening live that you can put your questions for Clayton over at Twisted X in the live chat right now. So if you have a question about Twisted X boots about uh, your Twisted X driving mocks. Uh, Robert in here says that he loves traditionally made boots, but has four pairs of Twisted X driving <laughs> mocks. So if you guys have any questions regarding the brand or anything, this is the, this is the moment. This is the moment. Put in the live chat, and I will relay those questions on to Clayton. All right. So my next question here has to do with uh, carbon neutrality. Um, I saw that in 2021, uh, Twisted X reached carbon neutrality. Can you explain what that actually means and how does it fit into the future of Twisted X? Absolutely. So that's a big, you know, kind of initiative here at Twisted X and kind of um, part of our company culture across the board. Um, so what carbon neutrality actually means is that we offset the amount of carbon that we produce just in our running our business. So we became carbon neutral at the end of uh, 2020 and then announced in 21. And basically what that means is that at our headquarters here in Decatur, at our factories across the globe, 
at our distribution and our shipping, we offset all of the carbon that is produced throughout those processes. Um, and the way that we do that is through a partnership with an organization called One Tree Planet. And so basically we've done the math, we tallied up all the, the carbon emissions that were uh, that are involved in our headquarters and our distribution and our shipping and uh, at our factories. And then we calculate the amount of offset that a tree provides and we plant the unnecessarily necessary amount of trees to offset that. Um, that's kind of our first um, scope, if you will. Um, really our end goal and what we're trying to pursue is that we go all the way down to the product level, um, meaning that literally the uh, carbon that it that is uh, that is put into creating a shoe or a boot or anything like that, we also offset that. Um, and so it's pretty. It's it takes a lot to wrap your mind around it. We actually have a full report on our website. Uh, if you go to the Our Planet section on twistedx.com, that shows you all of the math. We're super transparent, but transparent about um, kind of the those carbon emissions, like I mentioned earlier, um, and, and the amount of trees and plastic bottles and things like that that we've uh, saved and and then you know put back to to create that offset. Um, but to go back, you know, the reason that's important and what that means for the future of Twisted X is our customers, um, you know, live and breathe and work off of the land. Um, and we believe as a company and as a culture that it's our responsibility to take care of where we live and where we work and where our communities are. Um, that's just ingrained in kind of everything that we do. Um, and so we feel it's important for us to leave the earth um, better than we found it for future generations and our kids and grandchildren. Um, and so we're pretty proud that we've been able to achieve that so far and, and also encourage you know, our, our partners and our uh, peers in the, in the footwear industry and the fashion industry as a whole to kind of jump on board. It can be kind of a, a buzzword or you know, kind of a, some people might see it as like a, a marketing gimmick, but that's really, it's really not how we approach it. Um, I think there can be some of that out there for sure. But at Twisted X, I mean, we really do breathe it and have dedicated it, uh, dedicated, um, you know, our effort and our time to, to, like I mentioned, leaving the earth better than what, where we found it. When you are, recycling the foam for the insoles and recycling the plastics for the eco twix material that you use to build many of your driving mocks or maybe the tops of boots or even the leather twix that uh, you you integrate into some of the new tech x models uh, does that sort of offset carbon too like is there some way to measure that as well that would be kind of like what i mentioned we were wanting to get to that point where we yeah. can you know understand exactly every component, every material, and get it down, literally down to the product level where I can say, this boot is equivalent to this much um, carbon emissions, and then be able to offset that from a literal, the amount of product that we build. Um, we're not quite there yet. Um, but what I can say is that, like you mentioned, we do have different materials um, like leather Twix, like our Eco Twix material. We have Eco Tweed linings that we use in some of our casual shoes um, and on top of our footbeds. Uh, the cover that's on top of that is kind of a, a charcoal um, uh, blend along with our Eco material. Um, and so we're constantly looking for new materials and new ways to uh, build shoes and boots that is better for the environment. Um, so we're hoping to get there, but not quite yet. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that you guys are on that mission just sets you apart, right? From a lot of other brands, um, even in the entire footwear space. I mean, sustainability and using eco-friendly methods to, to build footwear is still relatively new, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's also 
of course, it's an important stance that you guys have. But the marketplace, you know, is mixed with some consumers that feel like, you know, maybe it's not good, right? And you spoke to that in your last answer here. Um, yeah. But how does Twisted X view this? And what is the strategy to change how sustainability and eco-friendly materials in footwear construction methods are viewed by consumers, like the overall durability of it and so on. Yeah, absolutely. This is actually something that we talk about internally all the time. First and foremost, the product has to perform, uh, you know, for its intended purpose. We are never going to add an eco element or an eco material for the sake of it being eco-friendly. Our goal every time that we sit down to create something new is to make the best version of that, whatever that concept is possible. And if we can work in proven, strong, durable, good looking materials that also are eco-friendly, then that's a win-win. And that's really what we try to do. That's awesome. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when you were answering that question. It kind of sounds like you're just going for a win-win situation. Your quality first, and then whatever you can use in the materials that you have available to you um, with a focus, hopefully the sustainability works. But if it doesn't at that one thing, then maybe you there's someplace else that you can integrate it. I mean, it seems like yeah. you guys have so many different places where you are trying to integrate something new, even from like the the molasses what is it the molasses yeah. midsole molasses, or something is yeah, that what it molasses is molasses eba where we use natural molasses as part of our kind of eva construction for our midsoles and again that just helps cut down on the amount of eva that's used um the same thing with uh the our rice cusk outsoles all that is is a filler um, essentially, those rice husks would end up in landfills or they're burned off, which is not uh, a lot of the time, which is not great for the environment. So we they're say, also used in the wine industry, though, too, you know. Interesting. I yeah, did not filter. Know yep. I, I learned that when I was working cool. at a winery last summer. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, sometimes we that we just looked at that as an opportunity to say, hey, I bet we could incorporate that into footwear. Someone came up with the idea and it works. It doesn't hurt the outsole. It almost adds like a cool little, you know, effect and, and kind of uh, texture to them. And it helps us reduce the amount of rubber that we're using. So again, a win-win. Why not? Cool. How do you how do you find out like these areas to try to incorporate a molasses EVA or a rice husk filled uh, rubber outsole? Is it just like we have this area here? We heard about this material. Should we just test it here? Um, so where do you find those opportunities to use these? These, I guess to me, it's like strange because it's new. Yeah. Um, but then also, what is the testing time like on that? Does it take months, years? Yeah. Um, so to answer the first part of your question, it really kind of comes from all over. You know, we we look outside of our Western industry a lot um, to find certain uh, certain materials or certain construction methods and then incorporate them into the things that we're trying to do. We've also been the innovators of a lot of things. Um, you know, we we have a good working relationship with our factories and our suppliers. And so a lot of the times they'll bring new concepts to us and we'll reject some of them. And then we'll say, you know what, that sounds interesting. We think we might be able to make that work. And then we'll, we'll like you said, kind of test, experiment. Um, you know, everything, especially on the work side, comes with rigorous testing um, to make sure that it's, you know, uh, it works for the people that are ultimately going to end up having it on their feet. Um, and so it's all, it's all proven and goes through rigorous testing to make sure that that it'll do what it needs to do. Um, and then kind of the second part of your question um, that, you know, we, we try to, uh, like I said, mentioned uh, just having a good relationship with our factories and our designers. And we have a lot of um, 
experience. <laughs> People that have been designing shoes and, and have been in the, the industry for a long time, we lean on their expertise and we may, we may look and say, you know what, this part of our boot or this part of our shoe, we haven't really touched with, um, with an, a sustainable element quite yet. Let's ask around, let's do some research, let's figure out if there's a better way that we can do that. And I think that's, again, going back to um, kind of our, our product development culture that I mentioned at the very beginning is we just stay curious, we're, we're tinkering, we're figuring out if there is a better or a new or an improved way of doing something. Um, we actually like to say that we wanna come out with a new technology or a new material or a new construction every six months. And that's ingrained, again, throughout our entire product development cycle. And that keeps us fresh and keeps us pushing the envelope uh, to always be creating. Wow. Yeah, that's prolific for such a, a big brand like Twisted X, for sure. My my question is, is since you are also, and I just thought of this, sure. um, you, you're, you're, in, you're, making all of these new sustainable eco-friendly things by incorporating different materials uh, to make pretty much the same thing that's been around, but just hopefully more healthy for the environment. Has any other brand or uh, company come forward or maybe a government come forward to say, I like this material. Can we license it for you for this completely other product that we have planned? And is that a possibility? Interesting. Uh, I don't, I am not aware of any uh, situation like that so far. Certainly a, pos a possibility. You know, we would have those conversations and, and listen and come together. Um, and we, like I mentioned, our goal is for the industry to come together and, and think about our planet Earth and what they can do uh, to, to do it better. Again, you never want to sacrifice durability or, um, you know, what the intended purpose of your product is for the sake of, uh, doing it more eco-friendly. If it's going to, you know, suffer because of it, you always want to make sure that you have that win-win situation. And, uh, we would love to see that more in the industry because uh, I just don't see a downside to that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I mean, with the amount of dabbling that you guys do with new materials that are eco-friendly or incorporate some, some special thing from the environment that would go to waste otherwise, uh, it, it makes me think about uh, just really elaborate things. I mean, I'm into space travel. I just finished up Cosmos by Carl Sagan. So at some point, I would imagine the human race, and I'm going there, guys, I'm going there. <laughs> at some point, I would imagine the human race goes to do some sort of space travel or something. And when we are out there, we need something equivalent to like the replicator on Star Trek, right? But where are we going to get those raw materials? So I see like, the work that you guys are doing with leather twix and things like that, is it possible to maybe take an old suit or something, a space suit, whatever it is, feed it into this replicator and then have it just make leather twix boots out of it? So that's <laughs> my kind of thought process for way, way, way in the future with what you guys are doing now. And it's it's shown to be something that has affected a space travel in the past. I mean, with Tang, rubber tires, things like that. So, yeah. I mean, that sort of progression just seems natural. I would completely agree with that. You know, uh, I think it's been a part of our human history to look at what's available to us and make something new out of it. And so that's just what we're doing here. Cool. I'm glad that you didn't call call me crazy for those thoughts there because <laughs> I know I I know the possibility is there. It's happened before. <laughs> Great. I got a couple of questions here uh, in the live chat. David Wilkinson asks, any chance you'll be adding extra widths to any um, maybe boot lines coming up? Yeah, definitely. Um... You know, we have in our TechX, uh, our second version of TechX um, with the rubber outsole, um, we have B-Wits and a few styles uh, in those. I think uh, maybe your brother actually ended up with a, a B-Wit. I can't remember exactly. He loves them. He wears That's them awesome. all the time. 
when he goes because he's an environmental he's an environmental uh, person for one of the large grocery chains uh, up here in the northeast and and if they have a diesel spill or some sort of spill he's always wearing those boots out in the field and uh, he loves them awesome yeah so we definitely you know i've listened to you and and i've listened to our customers we know that there is a need out there for uh, different sizes, different widths. Um, and that's something that we're always listening to uh, and uh, working toward. So we have some options currently available in B width. Um, there may be someone out there that really needs, you know, a triple E or a quadruple E. Um, sometimes that can be tough because there is a pretty large cost associated with, um, you know, opening up new lasts um, that can accommodate those sizes. Um, but that's always something that we're looking at and, and, you know, let us know. Yeah. Us know. I definitely did get a, uh, message this week about somebody looking for triple E's. Uh, <clears throat> so it's definitely out there. I mean, it, yeah. it's nice that you guys have the B wits to begin with because so many other brands, um, are, are not really offering B wits in, any of their boots really. And I feel like it's necessary to at least have a narrower width, but I know wider width folks sometimes get frustrated at the lack of boots that they have available to themselves as well. So it's, it's a long game. It is an investment to get those lasts. Uh, but uh, the fact that you guys have B widths at least is definitely uh definitely a pro. Got another question here from Robert Belenko who asks, haven't looked in a while. But are you guys offering any narrow square toe boots for men? So not yet, but, uh, and I think we'll probably talk about this in a little bit, but uh, we have some exciting things coming in the future uh, that I'm super excited about seeing come into the market at Twist Specs. Yeah, I uh, I might have seen something that kind of looks pretty cool at Wessa. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Because I did see a lot of a lot there at the showroom. Uh, what kind of styles are you most excited about here for 2023 and maybe 2024? If you guys have six months ahead planned, you guys must have plans for 2024 at this point. Sure. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> I'm sure some of them we do. You know, we're constantly developing and it's just when is it ready to go? Um, we're also super quick. And if we, you know, come up with an idea, it'll be here in a month. And then we just start tinkering and making it better and better. Um, but I'm super excited about um, some things coming later this year uh, on shelves later this year. We've got some different toes, um, some different materials, maybe some exotics. Uh, so, you know, Twisted X West on the Western side, as of recently, hasn't had just a ton of variety. We've got a lot of styles and they're great styles, but most everything's been, you know, that wide square toe look with, you know, a pretty standard height heel. Um, and so we've, we've kind of gone back to our roots, like I mentioned, our Western heritage, and we're reinvested in, in creating great cowboy boots with our kind of signature touch on them. So be on the lookout maybe for some Tech X styles with a narrow square toe. Um, and some exciting things coming this year that I'm super pumped about. I think that that blue rough out, did did that have the narrow square toe that you showed at the showroom? I had a pair on. Oh, but, that was uh, your pair, yeah, your special pair. Which, you know, you never know. We may we may see that coming eventually. That's just, you know, part of uh, playing around. But we do have a, a blue rough out coming um, that is a wide square toe right now. But, uh, you know, I certainly think we've seen it. The, the narrow square toe, um, you know, trend. I wouldn't even really call it a trend. It's just style is changing. That's part of the fun of working for you know a, a shoe and a boot company is you know following where the the desires and the wants and the acts are uh, are going and so we've seen a request for more narrow square looking toes um hearing a lot more requests recently for round toes from our different retailers so that may be something that we start looking into um i'm just excited about where the thing you know where the the direction that the Western boot industry is going right now. And I think I'm excited to see how Twisted X plays a part. Yeah, me too. What do you think is some of the driving factors into, 
you know, that shift from the wide square toe with the double stitch well, because that seemed to be like on top for like 20 years, if not yeah. more. So what is the driving shift between the change of, you know, the, the, the shift away from the wide square toe with the double stitch well into the narrow square toe and maybe the round toes, the R toe, the U toe, things like that. Certainly. I can take a guess at it. I'm not going to say that I know for certain where it's coming from. But, you know, for a long time, I'd say since the um, late 80s, you know, uh, that, that wide square toe look has been around and has been king. And it's still going to be popular. But I'd say there's a trend uh, in pop culture right now where Western wear, Western boots is popular. Um, I think that that can be contributed to a lot of different things. I think, uh, you know, Yellowstone being on television has, we've seen it across the industry that there's a lot of uh, interest from the general public for uh, boots. I think um, the internet in the day of, uh, you know, the, the modern times that we're living in has made finding um, different styles out there more readily accessible and communication re more readily accessible so you can find what you want and people are learning what it is that people do want. Um, I think that um, there's just a bunch of different reasons really, but I think that it's because people are tired of having the same old thing. Um, and I think regionality has a lot to do with that. Um, I think, especially in the cowboy boot world, a lot of the manufacturers are based here in Texas or the surrounding areas. And that influence, that wide square toe look has been a very, you know, Southern United States, Southwestern United States uh, thing for a long time. And that kind of just permeated throughout the country because that's what the cowboy boot brands were making. Um, but with the renewed interest and in people getting into cowboy boots, thanks to, you know, in no small part, people like you that are just sharing a lot about cowboy boots and what makes them exciting and what makes them cool and getting people involved and into it. Um, we've seen requests for different, different looks. And I think that's impacting now what the brands are doing. Yeah. It's nice. It's a nice refresher. You know, it's, it's uh it's nice to see a lot more different variation on toe shapes and styles because there's mm -hmm. lots of people all over the country who are interested in lots of different things. So it's uh, it's nice to see some more variation for sure, including yeah. the collabs that is happening. I mean, you guys, not only with the boots that you guys do, but also in like, you were talking Yellowstone. So you're collaborating with actors from Yellowstone. I think I saw that yeah. uh, you had a Yellowstone actor yeah. spokesperson giveaway thing. Yeah. Jefferson White, we partnered That's up it. with him. Um, uh, kind of, he helped us out with a, a promotion and was trying out our tech X style. So that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, we've, we've partnered up with uh, brands like Huey and done different shoes and boots with them. Um, and then I'll let you kind of get where you're going, but I think, yeah, I'm I want to know about Olivia Bennett, you know, yeah. cause you guys are doing, um, artist collabs and things like that. Uh, and she just had, uh, way more boots drop recently that she's also selling on her website too, yeah. uh, which it, which must be different for you guys too, to have, to have boots only on the website of an artist collab, sure. um, how did that collab start and what does it mean for Twisted X to collaborate with artists like Olivia Bennett? Yeah, that collaboration started kind of in a, a unique way. Um, Prasad, our, our CEO, was at uh, a fundraiser that Olivia Bennett, the, the painter, was at auctioning off one of her paintings. Um, it's to, it was for, a, the organization is called Kids Matter. Um, and goes back to helping uh, kids in need. Um, but essentially, Prasad bid on that painting of hers and won. Um, the Texas and Rose one? The Texas Rose one, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so when she came to deliver the painting to Prasad, he kind of stopped and asked her, he said, what do you think about me putting uh, this design on a pair of cowboy boots <laughs> and different shoes? And she, uh, you know, as anyone probably would be, was like, oh, yeah, I'm on board. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, and from there, we just kind of, we got to know Olivia really well. She, um, sh her story is, you know, incredible. She um, had uh, cancer as a young child and paint started painting as kind of a, a therapy and an outlet from that. Um, and she kind of rose to prominence. Um, she had a series called Let Freedom Bloom. She's well known for her kind of um, foliage and painting flowers but incorporating you know americana and color into that and she she painted one after the uh, 9 11 attacks and um met the president at the time and and that's kind of where she kind of got her her big break but um so we just kind of started talking to her and looked at a bunch of her different paintings and designs and got her involved with our our product team and they started playing really is what it was and so we have uh several different cowboy boots she's also got um our kicks that we call them kind of the sneaker looking shoes um with her design incorporated in there um and so it just kind of took off from there and we we've done a lot of cool things and like you mentioned they're available on her website but we also made them available to our entire you know network of stores across the country and several of them have uh, bought Olivia Bennett styles from that collection and have had you know awesome success with them they're they're definitely unique but they're they're fun and they're cool and and have an awesome story behind them as well that's great i love it it's a very unique thing for you guys to do especially on such a large basis with many different art styles many different kinds of boots mm -hmm. not just the printed ones but also the stitching like yeah like you guys went all in on that style it seemed like and it's really cool yeah yeah she definitely has this kind of very unique line work uh i would call it um series where uh, she has some in red and pink and br these bright colors and then even black and white. And we created a whole boot that, you know, the front part's black and the back part's white and uh, split down the, the, the quarters. Um, and it looks awesome. Um, you can check it out, like I said, on, on our website or on Olivia's website. Um, but just super cool to take a look at her, what she puts on canvas and then do the artwork that we do and put it on, you know, our shoes and our boots, um, which, you know, I, I do truly think that what uh, the designers do and people in the factories do is is art, just wearable. So it's pretty mm -hmm. cool collaborative. It is cool. Any other collaborations with artists coming up that you guys uh, maybe feel comfortable hinting towards? Uh, you know, not off the top of my head. One cool thing that we recently did, um, and they're hitting stores right now, is we partnered with uh, patients at a local um, children's hospital. Um, and it's the Cook Children's uh, Collection. We've got four uh, designs that were designed by these youth patients who um, we kind of brought in blank canvas shoes with our, our designer um, and Prasad was there and they visited with them and then helped them create their own shoe design. And then we actually took those to our factory and recreated them. Um, so that's a really cool art collection, art project um, that we're super proud of and proud to help out those families and those kids. Uh, and, you know, throughout the entire process from our factory to it hitting the stores, all that money is donated back to that hospital um, to benefit their art program. So, you know, that's just something that we're going to continue exploring different possibilities. Would love to talk to different artists and, and see what we can come up with. I think that's, again, just part of our tinkering and parting up part of us having fun is, you know, what cool thing that can we create and what good can we do? Yeah, I love it. That whole win-win attitude. It's, it's really, really nice and refreshing to see that you guys are exploring that space uh, and uh, making some progress with new materials and different kinds of ways to incorporate comfort 
into a boot, you know, because everybody's looking for something different. So um, I respect it. Thanks for all your work and keep up the great work. Uh, Clayton, I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, if you guys uh, want to learn more about Twisted X, you can always visit their website. Is there anything that you want to say to kind of close us out here about uh, where Twisted X is headed? Sure. You know, uh, we're going to continue uh, taking care of our communities, making cool stuff and uh, doing the best job that we can. So thank you all guys. Thank, every, thank you everybody for kind of listening in and, and learning a little bit about what we're doing at Twisted X. And if you see them in a store, try them on. You won't be disappointed. Awesome. Thank you so much, Clayton. Thank you for watching and listening, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Clayton, stick around. Everybody else, I'll see you next time. Peace, everybody. Have a good one. See y'all. All right.